17. Do you have it? Luke chapter 17, verses 14 through 19 is the ones I'm going to consider. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm so thankful that you guys are just following. Hopefully you're going to trek with me today. You're going to follow me as we, as we go into these scriptures. This is the one scripture I'm going to consider. I'm, I'm not going to stay in uh, Luke cha chapter 17. Um, but I believe at the end of, you know, as we come into the end of this Thanksgiving week, um, God wants to really deal with our hearts. Uh, can somebody say, God is after my heart? God is not after your money. God's not after your passion. God's after your heart because if he gets your heart, he gets your passion. He gets your generosity. He gets your mind. He gets everything else. And so uh, today, I believe that God is continually pressing. Hopefully, I get through everything. I may not uh, just because of the, uh, the, for the sake of time, the sake of honoring your time. And go Bills, man. Man, oh man. Lord Jesus. These people be stressing me out. I'd be, I be shutting off the TV like, Lord, do something. <laughs> Devil is a liar. My God. Um, so, uh, Luke chapter 17. It's on the screens. Luke chapter 17, verse 14 through 19 is the ones I'm going to consider. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was as they went. Somebody say, as they went. Don't wait. Go. When God gives you a word, go. Walk. Amen? Walk. As they went, they were what? They were what? They were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, this is what we talked about last week. Everybody else was cleansed. They didn't have or no longer had the evidence of the hurt, but there's a difference between having or carrying the evidence of the hurt and then still having a hurt heart. And so this man came back and said, wait a sec, something's different. He fell down on his face. This is what I want to highlight right here. And when he saw that he was healed, here it is, he returned. And with a loud voice, glorify God and fell down on his face, on his feet, giving him what? Thanks. Gave him what? Thanks. He didn't internalize it. It wasn't, he, he had to express his gratitude. And so, and it was, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, where are the, where, uh, where are the other, where are the nine? Weren't there, weren't there ten? Where are the nine? Uh, were they not found to give God glory except this foreigner? That means that even within them, there were, uh, there were Jews that were healed. There, were, there was a mixed multitude in there that was healed, but yet it was somebody that was outside of the covenant that came back to say thank you and uh, returned to give God glory. And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith, somebody say, my faith, my faith. has the ability to heal. And say, so your, your faith has made you well. Father, thank you for your word. Help me to preach this today. Help me preach it the way you gave it. I don't want to throw words in there. I don't want to throw my, my, my feelings in there. I want it to be all of you and none of me. Thank you, Lord, because whenever you speak, you change lives. Whenever your word goes forth, it transforms the hearts of man. And we thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Somebody can give God praise on that. Can you give God a hand clap of praise on that? Come on. Amen. Before you sit down, on your way down, can you do me a favor? Tell your neighbor, don't forget to say thank you. No, no, no. Tell your neighbor, don't forget to say thank you. Don't forget to say thank you. Amen. Amen. Now, would you turn to the other neighbor, the one that got a little bit of an attitude this morning, tell him, I don't know about you. But I'm grateful. How many here are grateful for God and everything that he has done? I'm not, uh, y'all, I'm running today. All right? 
But let me just, Joel, help me out with the transition and everything. Ushers, thank you. I'm not going to spend too much time on this verse today. I read the verse because I need you to see that this man came and specifically thanked God, thanked Jesus for what he had done. Um, if you want to see what we preach on the last verse, I want to say thank you to my wife, incredible translator. She did an amazing job last week. Uh, killed it, killed it. Um, and you're going to be hearing her soon, I'm telling you. Uh, um, but that's not my message. But uh, I believe that there's an important concept within this text. I'm not going to preach the text, but I'm going to pull something out of the text. And I'm going to give you some keys and some truths that there are when it comes to thanksgiving. Somebody say amen. amen. And so let me just say, I'm going to say this out front, out the gate, and I don't want you to be afraid. If you deal, you currently deal with fear, if you currently deal with massive stress, if you currently deal with massive levels of anxiety, constant worry, this is the word for you today. All right? You don't have to show yourself. Don't worry. God wants you to be free from that. Amen? So, somebody say, God wants me free. God wants you free from anxiety, fear, stress. Like, there are things that stress you, but they should not overwhelm you. Life just comes with stress. But when it comes to a place where you're crippled or paralyzed, then it's ungodly. Somebody say amen. amen. And so our minds, if, hopefully you're taking notes because it's going to help you. Our minds are programmed for the negative and the bad. They're programmed. That is what we call iniquity. You're, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a propensity towards the bad, the negative. Um, but that iniquity has been now covered by the blood of Jesus and now I don't have to live from the iniquity, I can live from the righteousness, which is given by Christ Jesus. And so, um, uh, uh, Pastor, what, why is it that you're saying that uh, the new uh, uh, negative that we have, a propensity towards the negative and the bad, uh, there is a reason why gossip spreads faster than good news. I'm going to say that again. There's a reason why bad news, gossip, spreads quicker than good news. It's because people love, they're attracted to negative. Amen? And so if your mind is not renewed, it will gravitate towards what's negative, towards what's going badly, rather than the good. Your mind, write, write this down, your mind is never neutral. Your mind does not play neutral. Your mind doesn't just sit doesn't just sit in a, in a neutral position. It will either spiral. Thank you, uh, Pastor Amanda, for the amazing, amazing small group. I learned that concept, the spiraling uh, 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 thoughts, where you think you... I'm going to give them a little preview. Is that all right? You ever text somebody, they don't text you back, and all of a sudden you start thinking stuff like, what did I say to that person? What's their problem? Oh my God, I can't believe, you're spiraling. Because your mind doesn't stay in a neutral position or in a place. It always tends to think negative. It goes into a negative place. And so this is why according to the book of Romans chapter 12, verse two, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, salvation and renewal are two different things. Just because you got saved don't mean your mind got renewed. You heard that? And so the moment I come to Jesus, I don't stop there. I got to keep walking out this process so that little by little, and hear me, it's not an overnight process, little by little because it is possible, it, it, it is possible to have to heal 10, 20 years of thinking that does not heal in 20 days. It takes time. It takes time to heal. It takes time to walk out forgiveness. Can somebody say amen to that? Yeah. 
Like if somebody constantly spoke to you in a bad or abusive manner for years, you ain't gonna tell me that you forgave them overnight. There are instantaneous miracles, I believe that. But there is the process of renewal where God has to now take you through the washer machine of life, the washer machine of his word, sanctify you with the water of his word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He takes you to the Delta Sonic of his word. Come on, Buffalo people. He takes you to Delta Sonic and he says, I'm not just gonna clean the outside. Let's go over there to the vacuum cleaner section and let's start getting into the carpet. Let's get into the, you know when your kids eat in the seats and they throw all those little crumbs inside the middle. He says, I want to get into the little crevices. I want to get into the little corners. I want to make sure that you are free because he who the sun sets free is free in is there anybody here that hears what I'm saying today? And so the seat, oh Lord, this is good. Write this down. Somebody write this down, please, please, because I'm going to forget it. The seat or the stronghold of fear and anxiety is a short-term memory. I'm going to say that again. The stronghold of fear and anxiety is a short-term memory it is when your thinking and your frame of perspective is short-sighted rather than seeing the entire picture and so fear and anxiety are going to creep into your life when you see things nearsighted when you see things short-sighted i i i am so I wear glasses to see at a distance. I couldn't see the number or the screen back there if I don't have glasses. And so anxiety and fear happens when your perspective of the future is blurred or blocked. And now because you're so, thank you, so overcome and overwhelmed by what's happening around you. This is a message for somebody today. When you're so overwhelmed, by what is happening around you. You know why you're overwhelmed? Because you can't see at a distance. You can't see the next, so you're overcome by your now. Are you, I'm telling you God, you're gonna walk out of here free today. And you're gonna walk out of here with a fresh perspective that what I'm in right now is not what's always gonna be. What I'm in right now is not the end. What I'm in right now is not the final word. What I'm in right now is not gonna be the rest of my life. What I'm in right now is not gonna be the end of my days. God has more for me and it's next, it's next. I'm gonna keep my eyes on the prize. I'm gonna keep my eyes. One thing I do, come on Apostle Paul, I forget the former things and I press toward the mark of the high call which is in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody here that can lift, give, lift up a shout of praise and give God thanks that this is in it. This is not the end. This is not the final say. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor God's not done. No, no, no. Tell your neighbor God's not done. Oh, this is the first act. I said this is the first act. If you read books, this is the introduction. If you watch movies, this is the conflict. But can I tell you, wherever there's a conflict, wherever there is evil, the Bible says that wherever sin abides, grace abounds even the more. Where, hear me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Is there anybody here that serves a great God? I serve a great God. And so, whew, come on y'all, slow down, slow down. Yo, I got overwhelmed. I, I'm, can I confess? Can I confess? Confess your sins one to another so that you might be saved. And, and so I, let me confess. I was, I, was, I was almost close to losing it last week. Y'all, <laughs> I was really close to losing it last week. Some of y'all, blessed individuals in this room, 
saw two inches. I saw almost seven feet of snow. I was, I was snow, I know you don't miss this, Bobo, right? All right, may, may God send all that snow in your direction. That's, I'm just kidding. Y'all, I, I, I shoveled snow, my, keep me honest, babe, for two days straight. I shoveled, I remember waking up Saturday from eight in the morning all the way to three o'clock in the afternoon. I stood out there, my, my, my snowblower was running the entire time. And I, I probably got five feet. Christian knows what I'm talking about. And all the other, right? And so I literally, like, I was, I told Amanda, I remember being out there and my hands were freezing. And I told Amanda, let's get out of here. Let's get, I, I, I kid you not, I said, let's get out of here. Because all I thought was, I could be in Miami right now. No, I kid you not, Lord, Lord, you know my heart. Listen, and I want to be here. I, I love this church. But last week tested me. It tried me. And, and then my mom, of course, is sending me pictures of the, of the sun. Like, I, I'm like, block. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Some of y'all reached out to me. I didn't answer. Listen, I was trying to get into a space of health in my mind because, like, it, it, it's not, it's ungodly levels of snow that fell. Like, no, no, and listen, I know it's funny, I'm exaggerating, but I wish you were there with me. Because this is, I'm not talking about snow. Snow disappears, it melts, but the effects of it are real. And, and so I'm walking, I'm, I'm shoveling, and I told Amanda, Amanda, let's go. Let's go to Toronto. Let's go somewhere where there's no snow. Surprisingly, there's no snow in Toronto. And so we go to Toronto, and uh, we just went out of Toronto, get the kids in the pool, uh, just relax. I just, and my daughters love hotel rooms. They, they just love running, jumping on beds and all that stuff. And so I just want to see them outside of the house enjoying their time. And so Amanda's like, hey, before we leave, let's get some food. Let's get some lunch. And I said, okay, cool. Um, uh, why don't we get, just get something on the road? And so she says, no, I want some. They got ramen here. I said, they got ramen here? I said, you want ramen from the mall? Like, we, in my life, okay, it's funny, right? But we had ramen in, 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 in California. That was ramen. Like, it was good. Exactly. But now... Not that you and I are disagreeing in public. And so, <laughs> marriage conference coming month of February. And so, <laughs> no, so I've had good, good ramen. I don't expect good ramen from the mall. You hear what I'm saying? Here it is. Her expectation didn't, mind mat uh, didn't match mine because she had tasted it before. I did not. So she had experience with ramen. Now I said, Amanda, they don't have ramen here. She's like, oh, they have ramen here. I've had it before. I said, Amanda, they ain't gonna have good ramen at the mall. She says, oh no, it's here. And she started taking the kids. You know, it's just like, oh Lord, I'm the one guy with the bag, you know. And just, right, we went down and then she goes, see, it's right there. Now I admit, the ramen was good, I would have missed out on a good meal if I would have allowed my ignorance or my lack of experience overshadow her authentic experience. Now, she knew it was good because she had an experience. You know why we ate there and we had good food? Because she remembered. I'm about to unlock a truth here. It is within the ability or, or your ability to remember that releases the next over your life. Here it is. I'm about to unlock something over you. Why does, why does the enemy always play the short game? Eve, eat the fruit now. Abraham, have the son now. Don't wait for the promise. Have the son now. Jesus, come on, everybody walk through this. 
Jesus, I'll give you, Satan told him when he was tempted in the, in the desert, you can, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. You got everything that your eyes, hear me, as far as your eyes can see. Because the enemy's short-sighted. So he can only give you what your eyes can see. But not knowing that Jesus' father was not just the owner of the kingdoms as far as his eyes could see. But God the Father is the owner of the kingdoms of this world. Will now become the king. Come on, I wish I could teach. It, oh Lord, hear this. When I give my spa, myself the space to remember what God has done, it gives me a glimpse of what he will do. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. When I give myself the space to remember, somebody say a reference point. All you need is a reference point. All you need is a reference point. In, my, in, my, in our neighborhood, they put these stakes down. They do that in yours, Jeff? They put these stakes down. When we first moved there, I'm like, why are these people putting wood in the ground? And what I didn't understand is that when the snow falls, you no longer see the ground. So the plows, if there's no reference marker, the plows will begin to destroy all the ground and all the grass. But the markers or the reference point give direction to where they need to plow or where they cannot see. And let me say, let me say it a different way. The potential of what he will do lies in the clues of what he's already done. Can I say it again? The potential of what God is able to do in your life lies in what he has already done. But my question to you today is, do you remember what he did? Do you remember what he's done? Do you remember? Oh, Lord. So I, I, I'm, I'm shoveling. Here, here, I'm, I'm going to continue my story. This is my testimony. Don't steal my testimony. And so as I'm shoveling, I'm shoveling. Y'all, I kid you not, I was citing scriptures. I was so discouraged. I was like, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amanda's talking, like, Amanda's like, you all right? You okay? I said, I'm all right. I'm going to be all right. Bring me hot chocolate. You okay? I'm like, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I shall life I shall not be afraid when the, my enemies my foes they came up to devour my flesh they stumbled and fell oh Lord there an army encamped against me my heart will not fear and this I will be confident I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living y'all and my mind you know why I kept citing scriptures because my mind is like you're not gonna go anywhere and I'm like eh, and, my, eh, and I'm like Lord I'm gonna see your goodness in the land of the living my mind is like all you're gonna see is snow for the rest of your life you ain't gonna be happy. Oh, you're gonna, oh, you wish you was in Florida. Don't you wish you was in, you know what? You know how hot it is in Florida right now? You know how nice your life would have been if you would have stayed in Florida? I said, Lord, I am where you call me to be. I am what you call me to be. I thank you, Lord, that I will not be discouraged. I will not become anxious. I'm not gonna deal with mental illness because of this. I thank you that I will not be traumatized by all of this that I'm going through. I'm not what my mind tells me I am, who you say that I am. And hear me, hear me, hear me today. As I was shoveling, a revelation came to me. And it said, why are you so fixated on the snow if you seen summer before? I wish I could preach this like I feel it. Some of us are so overwhelmed by what we are currently going through that we forget. Oh, here it is. It's a season. It's a season. Just like winter comes, summer is also going to come. Just like, oh, I'm talking to somebody today. Don't get stuck in the season that you're in. Don't get stuck in the mindset that you have. There is more. There's more. I said, man, you know, and then I started thinking, I said, man, I remember when I was complaining about the heat. 
Oh, I got you now. Oh, I got you now. Some of y'all were walking in here talking about, Pastor, it's too hot. It's too hot. I said, you better enjoy it now. See, and because you are so overwhelmed by what you're currently going through, you forget it's not going to last forever. That is what I'm trying to tell you. That while I, we're in winter, we got to remember there's another season coming up. There's a next that is coming up. Whatever the current situation, the season that you're in, you got to know the God that we serve is the God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever think, ask, or even imagine. Come on, book of Ecclesiastes. To everything is appointed a time, a season, a season to live, a season to die, a season to be born, a season to plant, a season to give harvest. Come on, you got to know there is a season and an appointed time for everything under the sun. Tell your neighbor, don't forget. Don't forget. David, don't forget. Don't y'all forget. Don't forget. Oh, let me, let me, can I, can I give you another example? I'm like, I'm, I'm running out of examples up here. So, so, I wrote this down. Y'all see this? This is my, I, I'm going to, I'm not going to put you out there. I'm going to testify myself. I'm going to put myself out there for your deliverance. Some of you know this, some of you don't. Some of you may or may not know that half the time when I preach up here, I have a migraine. So when I hold my, my, my head like this, I feel like my head is going to explode. And I still give you everything I got. Look, no, and I'm not saying it, hear me, it's not so that you could be like, oh my God, Pastor. I'm saying it so you can give God everything you have. Because if I'm alive, if I'm here, I'm going to give God everything I got while I'm here. And when I die, hear me, when I die, I'm going to die empty. I told Amanda, every time I travel, right? Give me a second. It's me. Every time I travel, God has opened some amazing doors. And recently I was at a conference, young people just going crazy for God. And I'm sitting there. And I'm seeing these young people running, filled with the Holy Spirit. And all the while, this is all I got. And I, you know what I did? Just drank a bunch of water. Pastor, yeah, have you tried this? Have you done? I've done everything. You think it? I've done it. And I'm still doing it as I walk this out. And maybe, uh, hear me, I know. My, my, my situation might not be yours, but again, I'm speaking from my perspective. This is what I got. If it's short-sighted, this is all that I'm going to see, and I'm going to become anxious by it. I'm going to become, hear me, when I preach, I become fearful of preaching the way I should preach just because I think I'm going to die. Now, you may not understand this because... You may not know what it is to live with a migraine four or five days a week. All right? I'm not talking about a bad headache once a month. I'm talking about weekly. And this has been since I was 16. All right? Nausea, all the side effects, light sensitivity, everything. This is mine. So, so, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, 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 Kelvin, come up here. Yeah. And so... So this is what I have. Can you just stand here, Van and White, and then hold them both? And so what I have to do, you got that marker? Thank you. I'm a bear is ready. Bear is ready. What I had to do is say, Lord, I know this is what I suffer with. I know this is what I currently have. And you know what, God? did is that he reminded me of what he has, has already done so that I don't dwell in what I'm in. 
Can I say it a different way or can I show it to you a different way? When I was a child, you may not know this, God healed me from chronic asthma. Pump my right knee. So much so that my parents sent me to Puerto Rico to a warmer climate so that I could breathe. You may not know this, but what I did was that I remember what God had already done. And so what I need to do is put this in front and hear me does it mean that this does no longer exist it doesn't mean that it disappears just because God this this something don't mean it disappears it just means that my frame of perspective is now focused not on what I feel it's focused on what God has done and now I have a perspective that you may not have or you may not have and so 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 uh, where can I get the more uh, um, I'm a calculina is there more give me more give me more in the office some do me a favor tell two or three people tell them don't forget don't forget don't forget don't forget don't forget don't forget can I keep going can I keep going I'm trying to cement this truth in your spirit so that you will not forget what God has already done. Jeremiah, come over here. Come over here. So, so, you hold this, and we got this. So, so, so. Is that a truth? You need God to provide. Y'all are getting married in four months. You need God to provide. Amen. Am I right? Yes. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Come over here. Have you ever seen God provide? Yes. One specifically. Remember when that was? Come over here. Hold this and put it in front of that. I got what I didn't deserve, and she mentioned specifically I was 19. Let me ask you right now, do you remember the last time God did something for you? But pastor, here it is, take it out, take it out. I need God to provide and I've never seen him do it before. Come over here, Jesse. So, so stand over here and you put that right in front of him. Matter of fact, you stand in front of him. Lioness women, come on. That's you? Is that you? Is that you? Be honest, is that you? Yeah, see, deliverance happens when you admit. I need him and I forgot. I forgot. And here it is, here it is. Did God provide for you guys? Come over here, mama, come over here. This is why you come to church. People think you come to church to sing songs, and we, oh no, I can do church. That's why you can do church from home if you're going to sing songs. 
But you come to church, stand with them. These two got engaged, by the way. I'm telling you. Oh, Lord, if you're looking for a man. Omar and Victoria, come over here. I saw this. Can you come over here? Now, I need you to do me a favor. Put that in front of that. This is why you come to church. So that if you don't have the testimony, you can connect to somebody who has the testimony and says, maybe you haven't seen it personally, but let me tell you something. Oh, let me tell you, Jeff and Millie. Jeff and Millie, won't God restore your children and bring them back home? Let, come over here. I know this ain't everybody's testimony. Come over here. Sometimes all you have is a promise. That's all you have. There's a promise. Do you have the fulfillment? You don't see it yet. Does frustration come? Does it get tiring to pray about the same thing? Sometimes the answer is in not in God doing it. The answer is in him giving you somebody else's testimony. Come over here. Now you have parents that have had to pray for their children to come home, to serve the Lord, and still pray that God would keep his word every single day of their lives. Sometimes it is in the pressing, in the hurt. It is sometimes in the moments when you don't think, like God forgot about it. God forgot about how he was going to do it. But then he will connect us. He will connect us to people who have a testimony that can say, hear me, if God healed my body, God can heal your body. If God... Listen, when I walk, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou, thou art with me. What is thou? The testimony, the presence of God, the promise of the Lord, that if he promised, he will fulfill his word over my life. Is there anybody here that can go back and remember, can you stand up on your feet and for the next 30 seconds, remember what God has done. Remember what he's done. Remember what he's done. No. You know what I do? Jeff, I'm going to give you all honesty 100% right now. When I don't feel good, you know what I remember? I remember visiting you at the hospital. I remember how you have or have an incurable form of cancer living in your body and I said Lord if you did it I y'all don't know this Jeff years ago how far back we looking five, five years he didn't have hair you see it well <laughs> bad joke he's my reference point But pastor, that's not a migraine. That's something to me that's bigger. See, to everybody, we try to match like sickness to sickness. 
The important is, it's not the sickness, it's the implications, the consequences of that sickness. It's not just the toll it takes on your body, it's the toll it takes on your mind. And just a few weeks ago, I anointed this man as a pastor in our church. When just five years ago, he was sitting in a hospital without a cure to the rare form of cancer he had in his body. I have a reference point. Do I have something in my body that, that hurts, that bothers me, that agitates me, that frustrates me? Absolutely. But do I have a greater truth? What's that truth? God will provide. The enemy, you know what the enemy wants to do to y'all? Is this. Come on. And then you begin to do everything you can in your to try to make this happen because you think this is it. With glasses. So you can zoom in. You never have enough. You'll never have enough. See how you always struggle? Your children are gonna struggle. Yep, this is all you're going to get. You're going to get, that's all you're going to get. This is all you're going to see. See that? That's all. That's all. That's all it's ever going to be. Remember. Remember. You have a great memory. Remember. Some of us have great memory, but we use it for the wrong things. Instead of remember God's goodness, we remember the bad. Remember the bad experiences. Man, I, I, I'm going to finish this whole message next week. I got into the introduction. But God is, God is examining hearts. God is wants you to examine your heart today. What is it that you can't seem to remember that God has done that is so easy to qu quickly forget? It took me a moment to go back into my archives and say, wait, I remember when I was a baby, God healed me from chronic asthma. And I was talking to, I was talking to somebody, it was Spanish service, I think, bilingual service. I was talking to a, 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 a dad, who was it? I'm trying to remember. And the dad's like, oh, when I went out to New Jersey and uh, he said, Pastor, can you pray for my son? that he's, he's dealing with, with chronic asthma. He, he can't run too far because, because uh, um, like he can have a severe panic attack and die. And I said, oh wait, God healed me from that. And instead of praying, just praying, it's important to pray, just praying for God to do it, I remember that God had already done it. And he, Oh, what a beautiful, he did it in me. The person that was praying for God to do what he's already done, he already did it before. And so I stood there before him, not just as a pastor praying for a miracle, but I stood there as a living miracle. That God is a, hear me, I don't, I don't breathe through a pump. I don't take a butyrol shots. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need a machine at home to sleep. I'm talking about no no remnants of the infirmity or the disease in my body. God has already done something. My question is, do you remember? When God, did, hear me, I think many of us, God has not done next because we haven't thanked him for what he has already done. Pastor, what, does thank, what is Thanksgiving? To God, Thanksgiving is not a holiday, my friends. That is a pagan man-made holiday. To God, Thanksgiving is the posture of your heart. It is your ability. I, we sat at the table from, for Thanksgiving. By the way, my, my parents were in town. They surprised us. Came from Puerto Rico just to spend it with us. We sat, we sat, how many, I, I, I pray you had an amazing Thanksgiving. When we sat around that table, you know what we did, Pastor Deborah? We stood around the table, we held hands. Eddie, you know what we started doing? My brother, 
you know my brother. Bobo, you know my brother, right? So my brother says, I want to pray. I'd be like, me and Nidhi, I'm right? And we were like, what's going on here? But then I remember that I was praying for God to do something in him. And what happened, Amanda? We just stood there. You know, you know all that, my brother? Because you know my brother, Eddie, right? You know my brother, all he came out of his mouth? Thank you. He was trying to say words. And all he said was thank you. And we were trying to say stuff. But all that would come out was thank you. His daughters, all his daughters were there. My parents were there. Like, is it perfect? Do I wish my mother-in-law was there? Absolutely. I know my wife, Mrs. Ir but But you got to thank God for where you are. You got to thank God for how far he's brought you. You forget. We forget. We forget what he's done. That's the reality. You're a human being. I'm a human being. We forget. You know what, Jesus? You know... That's why Jesus sat at a table with all of them. He said, because what do you do when you sit at a table with your family? You'd be like, man, you remember when we were five? Remember when we used to climb tables, chair? Some of y'all, you go to the Thanksgiving table and all you, all you talk about, remember when we was kids? Remember, Papa, when I beat you up? You remember that? Right? Am I right, Jay? Like, you remember when I was five? And then, and then you say, oh, wait, I got a picture. I got a picture for you. And you start... You start to remember. You're like, I did forget that. I did forget that we did that. I forget that. I forgot. And that is why we sit at a table because we just want to say, thank you, Lord. Is it perfect? Is my life ideal? Is my life where I want it to be? No, but I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for your hand over my life. That's why I say thank you. That's why I say thank you. Now today, can I give you just 60 seconds? And now, I mean this with all of my heart. Would you give God a thank you? Just give him a praise, a worship right where you are. Can you lift up your voice right there? Come on, lift up your voice. Tell him thank you. I don't deserve it, but thank you. Thank you that it's already done. Thank you that you've already provided. Thank you that you opened the door. Thank you that you're going to restore, that you're going to make it new. Pastor, what is Thanksgiving? It, it looks different. It looks like, thank you. To us, it just looked like thank you at the table. To other people, it means, man, I need to start giving my 